Welcome back to Tech Time. This is episode number nine. We've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, the first thing we're going to hit up is Tesla Model 3 achieves the lowest probability of injury ever. Afterwards, Microsoft releases Windows 10 October 2018 update, it fixes the data deletion bug. We're going to talk about the ridiculousness of that bug and uh, why we think it's good they got rid of it. Google has launched so many things, including a new Chromecast, uh, the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL. Um, there's the Home Hub, the Pixel Slate. We're going to talk about that. Um, Facebook announces Portal and Portal Plus, an Alexa-enabled video chat, not Google or Siri. Um, and then also Google Plus has closed. We'll talk about the implications of that. And then is spying too old-fashioned for our internet world? We have an update about our Russian spies. Welcome back to Tech Time. We are excited to have you back. Um, as always, please subscribe to our podcast, whether you use iTunes or any other Android uh, podcast listener. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel and comment. We love to respond. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, Dan. How about you? Good. I had a pretty fun weekend. Uh, so Halloween's in full effect here in Southern California. Ooh. Have you heard of Not Scary Farm before? No, I haven't heard okay. of Not Scary it's, Farm. It's a lot like Disneyland. Um, oh, yeah. But uh, it's just scary mazes with monsters. Um, so but I went is there. it not scary? It It is with a K, a yeah. silent K, meaning oh, that it was scary. Not, so, as in not very farms. Got it. Of, of a time or two. How about you? What were you up to this weekend? Well, it was Canadian Thanksgiving, so I ate some turkey, hung out with mom and dad. Uh, We went down to the the cabin down in southern Alberta, just north of Waterton, and Dan, it was beautiful. I'll I'll, uh, show you some of the pictures. Maybe we should tweet some out, but absolutely loved it. And then when I drove back, Edmonton was in full winter mode. Ah, no. <laughs> Snow all over the place. Why do you I, live there? <laughs> man, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe if this podcast is successful, I'll bring you to a warmer climate. <laughs> yes, that's right. Let's get a million views. Just another 999,000 to go. That's it. That's all you need to do. Just listen to our podcast, Save Matt from the Winter Save Stock. me from the winter. But I do love my skiing, so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, anyways, we We've got some more seasonable weather coming up. It's going to get above zero here, and that's zero Celsius. And, uh, yeah, it'll be nice again. But, anyways, that's what we're dealing with. Hey, so we wanted to start out with that new Tesla Model 3. There's some cool news. Um, apparently, it has achieved the lowest probability of injury ever. Um, and so, in a blog post on Monday, Tesla said that the Model 3 had been deemed to have the lowest probability um, of occupant injury than any other vehicle tested by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. That's pretty good, that especially is. since things like a Corolla or a Honda Accord have been out there for so long, right? Um, the driver reports that since 1979, the regulatory body has implemented the new car assessment program, which through a series of tests ultimately produces a rating for a new to market vehicle based on how well it performs on a variety of safety related tests. So basically they did a bunch of tests on this car and it kept winning over and over. Now, one of the reasons why that happened is because it's very low bearing and it has a very heavy battery. Mm-hmm. And so that helps it not flip. Um, you know, if you were on the side of the road or if somebody swiped you on the side, it helps it have that uh, low balance. Yeah. Uh, and the Model 3 has now widened that gap as it takes the number of new number one positions on the leader of the board for the safest overall vehicle for California. So that's pretty good. You know, um, I think, yeah, I was just going to say, I think it's really quite fascinating how the Model 3 is just tearing it up. Um, a lot of people were concerned, could they get enough Model 3s out? And with the amount of Model 3s, I believe they're doing 5,000 a week now, uh, what about quality control issues? And um, I am hearing about some paint issues, things like that. Tesla does take care of them. But it's great to see that quality, um, it might be a little paint fleck here or there that you can get fixed, and it doesn't affect safety. So I think that's really important. I think so, too. Have you had a chance to drive in the Model 3 yet or just the Model S? Um, actually, neither of them. Uh, but funny you should ask. I'm actually going down to Calgary. We don't have anything in Edmonton where I can test drive, but we do have a depot in Calgary, and 
I'm going to set up my uh, Model 3 test drive, and I'll test drive a Model S there as well. Um, I'm going to be down there, I think, um, Thursday, Friday this week. So ask me again next week, and I'll tell you how it goes. I'm, and I'm interested, yeah. and I think our listeners are interested, too, in how it handles the uh, snow and ice. Oh, yeah. So that'll be neat, especially as a low-bearing car, you know. I wonder if it uh, slips and if the back wheel slip. You'll have to tell us how it is. Well, with the additional weight, it should be a lot better on the snow. My only concern, and I believe it's front-wheel drive, the Model 3. I know the S is rear-wheel drive. You can get the all-wheel drive, but, it, you know, once again, it's more expensive so um, I think it's going to be good on the snow, especially front-wheel drive and the heavier weight. Very cool. And you still have that $1,000 down, right? So are you seriously I considering do. buying one? I am, but it's so expensive. <laughs> I'm, what I'm is just 80,000 Canadian, what is it? Well, it's 80,000 Canadian if you get every bell and whistle. So that means you're getting the all-wheel drive, you're getting the extra-long battery, you're getting the pure glass roof, you're... You're getting the ultimate uh, autopilot, even though it's not legal to use and probably won't be for years and years and years. So I, I think that one comes out to like 80 grand. Oh, and they now have a performance edition, which probably takes you closer to 90, 95. So crazy. But um, I'm still waiting for the 35,000 US dollar one. And then once I put the upgrades I want to see in there, like I do want a pretty nice autopilot. I'll probably be sitting around fifty-five, sixty thousand. I also want the extended battery just because I travel a lot for work, and I don't want to have to get halfway there and then wait an hour as I plug in. And is it weird that I just want the car because of the big display? <laughs> yes. <laughs> have you seen it before? It's like an iPad. It's like an iPad while I'm driving. That's okay. The car can drive itself. So in my car right now, it does not have Bluetooth. So I have one of those uh, Bluetooth plugins, yeah. and it fritzes every once in a while, so I have to flick it so that the music <laughs> is in. But it's going to be great when I finally get a Tesla. I'll, you guys will be the first yeah. to know. Um, our next thing that we wanted to bring up is uh, Windows 10 finally re-releases the October 2018 update. Um, this fixes that data deletion bug. Now, this bug was kind of scary. People were installing the update, and all of a sudden, the data on their drive, you know, files, pictures, spreadsheets, were being deleted by Microsoft. That's downright and scary. It's scary because I don't think a lot of people back up their data. Uh -huh. I know personally I use Google Docs, Google Drive. <laughs> Um, for most of my things, but when you're at work, you probably don't put your work spreadsheets up on the Google Docs, do you? You know? No, and no, could you I imagine don't. Imagine if someone came in and updated your your software, and then all of your hard work uh, just disappeared, or your pictures of your loved ones. Uh, it doesn't sound very fun, and so no, it'd be terrible. The software giant says there were only a few reports of data loss. They said one. One hundredth of a percent. So they fully investigated all the data, of da all the reports of data loss, and identified and fixed the known issue. Um, so the issue turns out to be um, it was people that were connecting um, their folders in a way that it was like a shortcut. Um, and that sounds like something maybe a power user would do, or something that you or me would do. And that's why the the update's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. um, so it appears that the bug that caused the file deletion was related to Windows 10 users who had enabled known folder redirection to redirect folders like desktop, documents, pictures, and screenshots from the default location. So again, if you're a regular user, if you're not really changing things up, um, you wouldn't have had to be worried in the first place. But uh, if you're a power user and if you like to organize where your documents are, it's very possible that your uh, data could have been deleted. So make sure to check that out. And that raises a good question. I mean, do you trust updates, Matt? Do you always do the um, latest? Updates? I usually do, absolutely, because um, often, especially with Windows 10, it's a security update. And um, there, we already know that we are not secure at all. So. I'd be happy to have any security update I can get. So, yeah, I trust them, and I just click, sure, go ahead. And then I sit there and tap my fingers while it goes through the reboot and install process. But it's yeah. fascinating to think that we're trusting, you know, this company, and then all of a sudden the files are deleted, right? Boom. I mean, yeah. kind of scary. Um, I'll be honest, I usually wait a week or two, especially for my phone. I have not updated to iOS 12 yet. 
I'm still on 11. Um, I know they have a really great beta testing process, but uh, I usually give it a few months before I switch over. I'm a little bit stubborn. Yeah, I, I got you on that one. One thing I got to say is I am impressed with how quickly updates are coming out for Windows 10 now. It seems to be a lot faster than in the past and other versions of Windows, um, even faster than Apple. Apple did a great job doing that with my Mac until it stopped working. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that. I'm frustrated it shouldn't have done that. But anyways, um, yeah, the, the updates are coming fast and furious. I personally trust them, and it's just downright scary that I could have lost things like family photos. Um, but thankfully, I do put most of my uh, documents in the cloud, especially photos. Photos, great. So we had a big Google launch uh, just this weekend. Do you want to talk a little bit about the Google event? Yeah, um, I don't know. Did you have a chance to watch it at all today, Dan? I definitely read about it, and I'm really excited about all the different devices. Maybe let's talk about each device, starting with the Pixel sure. 3 and the Pixel 3 XL. What did you learn about that? Um, well, um, it's actually nothing surprising. Uh, of course, the, the Pixel 3 and Pixel 3 XL were leaked uh, profusely before it came out, and so it's exactly what we were telling everybody it was going to look like. Um, so... Here's just the stats really quick. It's got uh, the XL as a 6.3 QHD plus flexible OLED screen at 523 uh, PPI, and it's got that honk and notch, Dan. The notch is, in my honk, opinion, honk. Yeah, it's so ugly. Like the ugliest iteration of a notch is huge, and it's because it's got two front-facing cameras. Is that um, for a depth picture, or why would they do that? You know, at first I thought it was, but really what they touted is the wide-angle ability with both cameras. It, it pieces the two uh, pictures together so that you can do group selfies. So um, it's actually a group selfie mode, but it's also probably really good if you're standing in front of the Eiffel Tower or something else and doing the selfie. Hey, look at me! So it's really, it's for awesome selfies. Now what surprised me is cameras tend to be on the back with the double cameras so that you can get like a zoom feature, um, the extra wide angle, or even night modes. And so it was surprising to see that they did that on the selfie because they felt like everything else could be handled by uh, software. So that's where the real story is. Um, I'll just finish really quick on the specs. We have wireless charging. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's great. <laughs> Um, and we also upped the uh, dust and water resistance uh, to IPX8. So that's fantastic. It's so it's it's now catching up to the other uh, flagship phones. So Real quick question yeah. about the um, OLED um, screen. Mm -hmm. What does it mean that it's flexible? I don't know. I, I just saw that written down. I think it's because, it, uh, especially on the XL, it goes right to the edge. So they're doing an edge-to-edge -edge screen. And so just like my... Uh, Samsung S9 here. I'll just hold it up and you can see that it has the curved edges here and that's the flexible screen. So I think that on the Pixel 3, it's got a little bit of that rounding of the edges to make it smooth and I think it's kind of a neat look. Um, so one camera on the back. Why did they do this? Well, I was pretty impressed. If you guys want to check out the keynote on it, I highly suggest you do because it's all about the AI. So this camera, or this phone, there's nothing really special about the hardware. There's nothing new that hasn't been done before. Uh, the, even the double selfie cam, uh, cameras has been done before for wide-angle shots, so that's not even new. But it's really neat, the tricks it can do. So the first one is top shot. And what it does is it takes multiple pictures, and then with the artificial intelligence, it says, this is the one where the wind wasn't blowing your hair in your face, or this is the one where you weren't blinking, so you don't have all the uh, uh, all the crazy pictures. Very and, cool. Yeah, it's neat because you can also sort of go through the pictures too, and you can just scroll until you see one that you like that the AI maybe didn't pick out, but it's supposed to be really good at that. This is a neat one. I'm actually really interested to see how well it works. It's called high-res digital zoom. Now, it only has one camera. And with my phone, the S9 Plus, I have two cameras, and I get an, a two times optical zoom. And that's why I got it. I wanted that optical zoom in my pocket. Well, this one, 
does a digital zoom, but it uses that shakiness from your hand when you're holding your phone up to grab pixels that the one camera doesn't grab all at once. And then as you zoom in, the artificial intelligence sort of fills in the blanks. So it's kind of like when you watch those spy movies and they're watching the camera footage and they're like, zoom in, zoom in, enhance, enhance. <laughs> enhance. It, it, and I was like, enhancing is totally fake. You can't enhance pixels. <laughs> But that's what this AI is doing. So they really are enhancing. So we're in the future. I'm excited to see if it really works like they were showing it off to do. And I'm then I'm excited for my shaky <laughs> hand to get some good pictures. So the shakier you are, the better it's going to enhance. So another one that's neat is Night Shot. Now, Night Shot sounds really cool because what it does is it takes a whole bunch of really quick shots with different apertures, grabbing different aspects of light, and then it layers the pictures on top of each other. And what it does is it then pieces together like a fully bright picture in the dark. Now, of course, they compared an iPhone X phone or a 10 phone to the Pixel 3, and it's probably completely unfair. But I'd like, I'd like to see people do these tests, and, and they always do. You can find them on YouTube, and it will be great to see if this night mode is truly as exciting as it looks. Well, I know. here's my yeah. question. I mean, yeah. these all sound great, but it sounds like it's taking like 100 photos for each photo you're taking. Yeah. How much memory are you using, and is that going to force you to buy the more expensive phone well, with the that, bigger hard drive? That's a great question because the phone actually doesn't have a lot of memory. Um, both the 3 and the 3XL come in a standard 64 gigabytes. That's tiny, Dan, totally tiny compared to what the other cameras are doing, especially these cheap ones coming out of China. So that was a little bit disappointing. You pay an extra $100 to get the 128 gigs. Um, but really what's great about these phones is all your photos, as long as you're taking them with this phone um, in their native, uh, I think it's only 12 megapixels, it's all free and it uploads to your Google Photos. And so that's great. And I think the AI is smart enough to say that when you take all these pictures and this one's the one where you don't blink, and you're happy with it, it deletes everything else. So I, I think that's good. And I believe there's also a feature where you can keep them all if you really want to. Nice. Uh, and so that lets you just go crazy and it all goes to the cloud and then you can weed through them later. Um, another really neat feature is called moving focus. So I don't know if you've ever tried to take a picture of a dog. <laughs> Dogs Always. don't hold still. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs, cats, sea lions. Do I have a shaky hand while I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> and what it does is it identifies it. Look at this kid. It's zooming around and or this motorbike, and it knows that this is the subject and the focus follows. So that's pretty neat. And then the very last one that um, is part AI is the wide selfie that we talked about earlier that just grabs that bigger uh, field of view. So um, that looks pretty neat. There's also another interesting feature. Um, they use Google's... Um, What's it, uh, Google's Assistant to screen a call. So you know how you get those phone calls like, this is your captain speaking, and it's, of course, a total fake call. So if you get a call that you don't recognize the number, you can actually turn on the auto answer, and Google Assistant will answer your phone for you. And Whoa. then it, it shows this little text readout of what the phone says and then what people say to the phone. And then if it's like, this is your captain speaking, you can just hang up right there. Or if it's like, this is your mom, and I lost my old phone, and I'm calling from a pay phone. And then you can be like, oh, mom, and then you can pick up. So Did I ever tell you about that time that mom got lost in Los Angeles in a bad area and had to use a pay phone at a gas station? No. It was just last year. It was ridiculous. So it could be her. Um, it could one, be. <laughs> one real quick thing I want to bring up with that is uh, that reminds me a lot of Google Voice. Um, did you ever have a Google Voice? Um, it has that option where you can have, you know, a robotic voice just pick oh, up yeah. and say, oh, hi, you know, who is this? And then they have to yeah. record it. And then you pick up the phone, it rings, and it says, hello, this is your captain speaking. And then you can choose to accept or not. It sounds a lot like Google Voice. Yeah, it sounds like it is, and it's just a little bit smarter than that, and it's built right into the phone. So it's not a game changer to me. I wouldn't buy the phone just for that. But for these other features like night mode and um, and high-res digital zoom top, sh top shot, I think these are actually pretty cool. I'm hoping they work, and if they do, do we need three or four cameras on the back like what is the the rage that's happening right now in the hardware world?
Pretty soon the phones are going to be like bumblebees. They're going to have a million eyes, both on the sides. They're going to vibrate to get really good pictures. Am I right? Yeah, uh, personally, I think a combination of the two, right? Let's use that AI. Let's throw on some optical zoom there. Hey, Google, let's get that optical zoom so you get that better quality. Throw in your super brilliant smartness, and then you get an even better product. Well, one thing that was really cool, too, from uh, the announcements was the Home Hub. Um, it's a screen to Google Home. Now, you have Google Home, and uh, yes. you guys love it, right? Do you use it we often? Do. We That's use fun. it every day. Yeah, we love it. And it, it turns on our lights, and it can lock my door. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of security built into it as well. But um, What yeah, we, lock do you have for your door? Uh, I've got the August. Uh, really? Yeah, smart lock, yeah. What I do you put think it on, about it? Is I, it I really like it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. The only problem is my door has a weather ceiling in it, and it, it has a hard time closing unless you push the door tight. So I've just got to do a little bit of adjusting, and then it will be perfect. When I was looking at that August lock, um, yeah. it just looked really big and bulky to me. It and, is. Uh, I kind of have a small house, and so I yeah. didn't want like it taking up the whole entire um doorway you know i don't know it just yeah. seemed really big and it seemed like i had to replace the batteries every six months is is it annoying or do you like it or um it is big and bulky it's ugly i'll i'll admit that you go walking i've got it on my back door and you walk by and it's huge and it's ugly um yeah that's probably a complaint and it doesn't need to be that big it doesn't you look at the components and i'll wait another few things. generations yeah but uh back to the home hub yeah, um, it's one hundred and fifty dollars cheaper than Amazon show. You know, every time I see Amazon show on the Internet, you know, somebody's displaying it. I just don't have that feeling like I need to run to the store and buy it. Um, it just kind of looks cheesy. I don't know. But uh, this Google Home might be a little bit sleeker. Um, it has the seven inch screen. Um, it has good sound, um, but uh, no camera yet. What do you think? Would you be excited about it? You know, people are, are split on whether they want this camera or not. I think that's actually kind of lame that you don't have a camera. I mean, what's great about the Google Home, I do uh, phone calls on it. So, like, I, I've talked to you on it in the past. Oh, yeah? And, yeah, and mom and dad. and I mean, everybody can gather around the Google Home and have a great conversation. Why not do video calling? Now, people on the other side of the coin they're like that's creepy i mean google home's already listening to everything i say um so why would i want it looking at everything that i do <laughs> don't put it in the bathroom have you been calling <laughs> yeah. me from the bathroom <laughs> google picture phone. <laughs> yeah. then you'll know i'm sitting on the toilet so um and also people want to put these things in their bedrooms um the the kind of neat thing about it is you can set an alarm and as it gets closer to when your alarm goes off it can get brighter and brighter and brighter and slowly wake you up i think it's cheesy i don't care about that but it's one of the things they're touting. Personally, I don't think I'm going to buy it unless it's got a camera. Okay. Well, you did write a note that says, many freak out. So I, <laughs> yeah. thought, <laughs> I thought maybe you'd be excited about it. <laughs> no, it's freak out about uh, having a camera. Okay. So there was another product that was announced, and this is probably the least interesting to me. Um, it's the Pixel Slate. So okay. it's um, Google's approach to the iPad Pro. <laughs> And to tell you the truth, Dan, I think tablets are on their way out. Um, Me too. It, We've talked about it, that before. Yeah. So it's got Chrome OS, which, yeah, it's light. It's fast. Um, you can play any game that's in the Play Store. But it's not going to replace a laptop or a computer, especially for heavy gaming. Um, and the price. So it starts out at $799, which is about Whoa. the same as the iPad Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you pay another $200 to get the keyboard, the magnetic keyboard, a lot like the Surface, and then another $100 for a pen. So now you're at $1,000 US dollars. Dan, just go get yourself the Surface Pro 6. It's $1,000. Yeah, or a MacBook. <laughs> yeah, get a full laptop, right? <laughs> yeah. And, I can't these, believe people would exact. because it just has Chrome OS on it, right? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it looks really nice. It comes with Google Assistant, and it's got um, super high resolution. I haven't been able to compare it to the iPad Pro or to, say, the Surface Pro, uh, Microsoft Surface Pro. So um, it does look like it's got a lot of really neat features, but in the end, you still don't have 
Windows or uh, or Mac. Like it's so you're not playing your Steam games. You're not using Valve or anything like that. That's crazy. No, or having a full um, experience with the Office suite. Um, Yes, they have Android apps, but it's not the same, and it's not as quick and easy to use. But you could play my new game on it, which would be exciting. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. (laughs) It's a great game. I've been playing it so much. It's It's called LA Words. Look it up. I like it. The next thing uh, I wanted to talk about is Facebook announcing Portal and Portal Plus. Um, So this is really similar. It's an Alexa-enabled video chat device for your home, but this time it actually has a camera. So you'd be a little more stoked about this, right, Matt? Yeah, actually, it looks great. Um, it's a lot more expensive than uh, the Google Hub. I mean, the Google Hub's only seven inches. Um, this one comes in two sizes, a 10-inch for $200 and a 15-inch for $350. And the 15-inch is actually really long, so you got portrait mode or you can rotate it. Um, the whole idea about this is to bring Messenger into the home. And uh, they want it so that you can feel like the the person's actually in the room with you. And with a 15-inch, sure, it would be pretty cool. There's, there's Dan's smiling face looking at me, right, calling from L.A. as I freeze. Shaking, shaking yeah, like this. Shaking the camera <laughs> so you can zoom in on my nose. But... Uh, <laughs> Anyways, it, it looks interesting. I think the neat feature about this is it's got the smart camera. So what this camera will do, according to what they say, is it will zoom around. So if somebody else walks in and starts talking, the camera will pan, and then it will zoom in to wherever the action is. I'd really like to see if this works or not. I mean, that just sounds really crazy. Like, What if you have a robotic vacuum that comes in the room? Is it going to zoom in on that? <laughs> Back to me. Look at me. Or a dog. <laughs> Right. So maybe it zooms in on the fish and the fish bowl just swimming around. I don't know. Um, it would be neat to see if it really works. Same thing with smart sound. It, it will take all the background noise and kind of fade that out. Um, I That seems more believable to me than just this magic cameraman that seems to work. But um, I'd like to see how it works. Well, it's cool that it works with Facebook Messenger because that's what I use anyways for everything. Um, so you could just, you know, talk to whoever on it and you wouldn't have to make them get a new account with, you know, say Google Plus. Yeah. So did you hear about Google Plus is actually closing after some bug leaks of personal information? Now, we've talked about this before, um, how people try to make things that, that isn't their bread and butter for example, when uh, Apple made their social network on iTunes that totally flopped. Um, now, this time, it's Google trying to make a Facebook, Google+, Plus, and it totally has been flopping. I mean, I'm amazed it even lasted this long. Um, you know, honestly, I always post things on Google+. Plus. I find it hard on the Internet to uh, find a place that you can post your blogs or your YouTube videos. Um, I really like that about Google+, Plus. how it's kind of like Twitter, how you can say, hey, check this out. Mm-hmm. And people can easily search it, and it's not buried um, under a bunch of other searches. But uh, So that's kind of sad that Google+, Plus is leaving. But uh, did you ever really use it? You know what? I, I didn't. I set it up, and um, I kind of liked it because, you know, I've admitted I'm a OnePlus fan, and I've had OnePlus phones in the past, and they were really present on Google+, Plus, and I really like that. So I'd go to my Google+, Plus feed, and there would be OnePlus. I wonder if it has to do with the Plus, Plus, Plus. Anyway. <laughs> a lot um, of pluses in there. <laughs> it's a lot of pluses. Um, but I think what's the most controversial part about this move is this happened at the same time Facebook announced that they had a problem earlier on in the year and that they'd been hacked. And we talked about that last week. So um, they kept it quiet. And um, that's kind of evil, Google. I know that they're not promising to do no evil anymore, but, you know, they, they didn't announce that they had a problem. And maybe it's because nobody cares because nobody really uses it anyways. <laughs> Um, but now it's gone. So one thing that I thought was cool about Google Plus when it first came out is they had Google Circles. So mm. you know when you're on Facebook and you have 2,000 friends and you cannot remember who that Bill person is or that Tiffany girl is. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know it, you kind of you have to do a little bit of stalking, look at their pictures, see who their friends are. It takes you a little bit of time to figure mm. out whose birthday it is that you're posting, right? The neat thing about Google Plus and the idea that they had was it was going to be organized. So when you added a friend, you would add it to a circle. So maybe the circle of work friends or church friends or, 
um, you know, school friends. And so as you were adding people, they were going into groups and you could easily message the groups. You know, I only want people at school to see this post or I only want people at work to see this post. And uh, I thought that was ingenious. I think Facebook's very disorganized. Um, I, I would really just like to have them bunch things together and, and have artificial intelligence to say, this is who this is. Let's group these people all into one. Um, I really liked that, but obviously it didn't work. People didn't catch on to it. Yeah, so. it's a shame. Um, you're right. I thought that was great. And uh, I don't see Facebook paying the money to Google to to buy. In fact, um, I think Google and Facebook don't get along very much right now because in Facebook's um, – in their uh, portal, in Portal Plus, they chose to go with Alexa as their voice assistant. Instead, really? Yeah. Um, Amazon. Of, yeah. So Amazon, in, instead of making it work with all the big ones like Siri, Google, so Apple, Google, and Amazon, they chose to go with Amazon. So that kind of surprised me. And uh, I don't know if it was good or bad. That's probably the main reason why I won't get it because I'm invested in the Google, um, the Google sphere. So not really into Facebook sphere. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see if they, they made the right choice or not. Now, before we end, there's something that I've been dying to hear about, uh, that Russian spy saga yeah. that you've been on top of. What's going on there? Okay, I just had to put this in here because it is so fascinating. So the world of spies is it's coming down. Um, and so we talked about, I think it was in our first or second podcast, how the spies that uh, tried to assassinate Sergei Skripal in um, Salisbury, England, were caught. Um, and so it was this technology side of all these cameras that caught them when they got off the plane and watched them get on the bus and go to their hotel and then watch them go to Salisbury and watch them go on a reconnaissance mission and then watch them go and do it the next day. Like it was fascinating how they were able to use this technology to catch these spies. Well, um, then Russia, of course, uh, <laughs> they couldn't let it go. They couldn't just be like, well, maybe you got our spies this time, but we're not telling you who they are. So to try Moose to say, squirrel. That's, that's right, Moose and Squirrel. So what they decided to do is they had the craziest interview and they put it on um, RT, which is Russian television. And it's, of course, paid for by the Russian government. And they interviewed these two guys. and They're like, no, trust us. We are just nutritionist experts who like to go look at 14th century clock towers and cathedrals in Salisbury. We specifically flew from Moscow to go look at this clock. Like, that's it. That was their their alibi. And the whole world looked at it and they're like, really? Like, that's your attempt to try to give these two guys an alibi? Like, they should have just let them disappear into, yeah, okay, you got our spies, but we're not telling you who they are. So because of this, there is a, a website called um, Bellingcat out of England. And this is another fascinating thing with technology. They watched the interviews. They went through the data and information that MI6 put together as far as who are these guys. They nailed them. They found out exactly who these guys are. So the very first one, one week after the interview, uh, they disclosed that the first guy's name uh, was Colonel Anatoly Chipiga. Awesome. And yeah, so they're like, here's the guy. And this is where he was born. This is the military school he went to. He got honors. Like, we, we know everything about this guy. Here's a picture of him. This is what he looks like. So you don't have to. So it's like, this is obviously the same guy. And they're showing them side by side and with all the video camera stuff. And here he is in the interview. And then here he is getting Russia's highest honor, which is the hero of Russia. And uh, he got it from Putin himself. Now, that was classified. They couldn't find any digital information about it because Russia had scrubbed that. But when they went to his hometown and went and talked to his grandma, they're like, is this your son? And she's like, yes, look on the wall. I've got the picture of him getting the hero of Russia from Putin. So, I mean, it would totally fell apart. And then it took a little bit longer. And the same website has now uncovered who the second spy was. And his name is Alexander Mishkin, and he, it turns out he's a military doctor, and it makes sense. They were using the Novichik nerve agent, 
And um, this guy, they were able to release that he spent a lot of time in the Ukraine. So not only is he a military doctor, but they were able to expose that he is a spy and he's been working for Russia and he's been in the Ukraine. And we talked earlier about all the fake news that was happening in the Ukraine and how it helped uh, topple the Crimean P Peninsula and then it got annexed by Russia. I mean, this it just shows that all the dominoes, all the pieces are coming together and they're starting to fall. And it shows that Russia is not nearly as innocent as they pretend to be. I mean, of course, we all know that they were behind everything. And it wasn't just the Russian people in the Ukraine. They're like, please come take us, Putin. We all want to be Russia again. But it was carefully orchestrated. And the GRU, which is the Russian spy agency, was behind it. So all of this, which amazed me, was exposed by a grassroots website. So these are just people who are like, this is dumb. Let's find out who these people are. I mean, these are hackers. These are investigative journalists. This isn't MI6 that put this together. Maybe they did as well separately and didn't release it. But these are people who are just discovering what's going on. So here's a question. Um, is is the age of international spying over like or is it just going to get more technical like you can't get away with the old school stuff anymore you can't just get away with a, a let's go in there and let's assassinate them by spraying nerve agent on their doorknobs right <laughs> so what do you think dan would james bond stand a chance today I'm just shocked that these people are not clock tower enthusiasts. This whole time, I thought they were in England to look at the clock towers, two innocent people. <laughs> we just love 14th century clocks. What does Wikipedia say? Oldest clock in Europe. <laughs> we must fly out just to see. We must go see. <laughs> That's really cool. If you guys have comments, please comment below in the YouTube channel. Feel free to tweet at us at Tech Time Show PC. Um, as well, we would love for you to subscribe um, and tune in next week. Take care. Talk to you next week.